Hi everybody, welcome to Great Art to Steel. My name is Ian Ellis and I'm just going to do another video focusing on two killer mixing. The focus on this time is uh, using complementary killers and the killer line I usually use um, for all the other paintings we've looked at so far um, it's not really much used for this particular painting uh, or the rabbit by Luke Tamman painted in 1994. Um, it's got a lot of very subtle colours, uh, so when you look at the line, it's not really good for helping you get the complementary. So you need to put something, that you need to put the colours into a circle. Um, in fact, when I went to an exhibition of Luke Tamman's work over at the Tate, Tate Modern, London, I, I noticed that he put in the video, one of his videos, he was actually organising his colours into a big circle on his palette. So his palette would be a circular palette, and, uh, and he'd put things in complementary order. So it, to get the complementary, if you go back to my um, colour theory, you'll see you'll get the colour theory video. You'll see I've got the yellow, blue and red as the three primary colours. And, and a very simple way of rem remembering the complementaries is knowing that the opposite of each primary colour is a mix of the other two. So if you've got uh, red and blue, the opposite of yellow is purple. The other two colours you get, say you get yellow and red, the colour we mix is orange and the other opposite colour is blue. Same if you mix uh, blue and yellow you get green. The opposite colour is the colour that's not in the actual mix which is red. So it's real, really strict order to colour mixing to get the complementaries. Whereas, um, if I just take this off and show you the image I'm going to work from. And this is the actual colours I'm looking at. And you can see there's a kind of brownness to the colours. And I've done a, a video already on mixing browns. Um, and browns basically are shades of orange. So uh, what we're looking at then is the orange opposite the blue. And I've organised a palette here to try and get these colours, which are two earth colours, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and two blues. I've got ultramarine blue and tarlow blue. And I've got white as well. Um, what I've done, I've actually drawn this trace it with a, with a black felt tip and just for speed and then put down a ground I think it's underneath the painting a kind of ochre ground and I mix that using burnt sienna with ultramarine blue to get the grey then I use a tiny bit of the yellow ochre so they kind of three colour mixing to get the ground there. Um, so what I'm going to do is just do a, a bit of mixing first of all with the ultramarine blue and uh, burnt sienna which I and burnt sienna itself is, is an orange, it's a shade of orange, so it's hue, we would call it orange. So I'm going to use the ultramarine blue to get myself a, should get a black with the complementary colours. That's a real test. I've, I've done an Instagram video, there's another one on actually mixing greys I've done. So if you want to find me on, um, on, on that, it's, it's in the same name, Great Artist Steel, and you'll find me on that. And I've got a kind of uh, how to mix greys using the same system. Now I can see that's gone a bit, uh, to see the colour, it's a very subtle colour, it's gone a bit brown there. I'm just going to calm it down with the, with the white. And then if you want to grey it more, a bit like adding, adding black, because I use a complementary colour. I'm just going for more of a grey colour by adding more blue and I can see it moving over towards a colour grey. I've got these colours in here, I think that's pretty good colours. So I would say that was a, a warm tone of, um, of the burnt sienna. If I keep adding the blue, it will go towards, towards black and, then, and if you actually add these two together you should get a neutral grey, something in between the two. Then you can just move it slightly over towards more of a blue. I don't see any blues in there. I think it's all kind of staying over on the warm side. A bit like when we look at Lucian Freud's paintings, you'll find a similar kind of thing where a lot of the greys in the painting are quite warm. And the same with the time with this painting. Um, lots of white area here. There's a very subtle brown. I've put more white with that. So I'm preparing my palette before I start painting. Shouldn't take me too long to get these colours. 
And I've got another another pair as well. I've got the Tyler Blue. If I use a Tyler Blue, it kind of goes over towards more of a greenish colour. And, and this painting on and uh, and this book of Luke Tarman's, um, it's got a kind of greenish hue. I assume it's used the Tyler Blue and the um, the Burnt Sienna. I'm not sure about that. But um, <clears throat> if you just use the Tyler Blue, they're not quite opposite. So if you look at the blue, what I've used is Ultimate Blue. It's very close to to the blue. It's just slightly over towards the purple, the ultimate blue. And you go over to the other side, you get the green blue. I'm using tarlow blue. So what I should get, it should go towards more of a kind of a greenish, yellowish kind of browns that I think are, are up here. So I'm actually mixing shades of uh, yellow, orange over here, all these colors coming in by mixing the line across there and getting all these colors, all the shades of them. Um, <clears throat> so um, if I just use the tarlow blue now. Palette knife essential, everybody, keeping everything clean. So I've got the burnt sienna, tiny bit of tarlow blue. Tiny bit of tarlow blue, I said. You can see that's going over towards more of a kind of greeny color. I see in that painting a bit more sienna with it. Just overdone the blue. And they get these really lovely subtle changes in color, just slightly close to each other. And I can use a bit of white with that as well. And great, the, the, the white will calm my colour down. Slightly more, slightly more taller. Give it more of a kind of greenish hue. It's a very subtle change, but you can see when you put it next to this colour, there is a lovely combination uh, of change in colour. It's really beautiful. That's how it's like sort of orange with yellow, yellow, it's almost like a grey yellow ochre. Um, I've not got the complementary of ochre, but I'm actually getting it by mixing those two together. together. <clears throat> I've got a dark, some darker colour as well, some darker browns. Um, I'm just going to set off working with a small brush and just start painting a few of these greys. And I think from looking at the paintings, there's a kind of down, uh, sideways stroke. It reminds me a bit of Cezanne and the negative spaces of the rabbit you can see. I think it almost looks like he's used a stencil within that. It wouldn't surprise me to get these edges like that. But, uh, but it's, a, it's a beautiful image and it just shows you that animals can be quite cool to paint. Um, it's just a very simple uh, image. Um, I'm just going to go for the darker. Excuse me, should be using my knife. I'm going to make myself a darker um, colour. Ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Keep adding burnt sienna to that. And I get myself a dark brown, a little bit of white with it. More blue. And it's getting this darkness there. Just a little bit more blue. Just calm it down a little bit. And I can go for this uh, just a little bit of I'm just using a little bit of zest with it. I've got zest. You could mix it with a bit of linseed oil. <clears throat> when you're mixing the zest and linseed oil, you, you get a finish, and it just gives you a bit of sheen. If you look at his paintings, they look quite thinly painted, but I don't see too many um, dry marks here. This looks quite wet brush marks. You can see there. If, you, if the more more liquid you use, the more of a brush mark you get. So. That what a moment I've just put there. That's a bit too heavy the paint, so I'm just going to work into that a little bit and just go back. Just use a little bit more liquid. And you can see the brush mark coming into the painting. The painting's quite much bigger than this, but this is a tiny little painting just to quickly show you the the mixing. It moves over towards more of a grey. There's a slight broken bit of paint coming into that. And I can use a small brush to get that really tiny shape in that. More brown. You can see it goes over towards more of a brown. Again, trying to keep the brush marks going the same way. It's almost like a hatch or you're drawing with this paintings.
And then it goes over towards more of a greeny colour, again, the Tarlow blue. With a Sienna. And using a cleaner brush to get these colours in there. Just a little bit too too green. A little bit white. <clears throat> just to grey it slightly. The white just greys it, stop it looking too dark. And again, a bit more liquid. The liquid has to be right. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the... If you get so someone like Francis Bacon, you look at his studio, you find he puts all these little marks all over his walls. It's just trying to get the right amount of liquid on the brush. So... See what I'm doing, just taking off the paint. Then I'm just finding the right amount of paint. It's quite dry. I'm still getting about, I've got a bit of liquid on my brush, but not much. And going over towards more of a greeny color as it comes up the top. A little bit of light and maybe a few little greys in there as well, a few more whites appearing within the painting. So it's mixing up different colours. And the edge is very important here. So it's, that's why I think is use a stencil, because I'm having to draw the brushwork up towards that. And that's not getting such a sharper edge as I should do with a stencil with the use that. I can try and get that edge. And as it moves over, it moves from green to burnt sienna. So you've got the burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. Again, just a bit more sienna in that, going more brown, a bit more white. So it's not so, that's better. Again, it's too thick, the paint's too thick. I'm just gonna work into that with a rag. I'm rushing this all a bit too much, just to not save you too much of your time. And back with the brush. It has to be done with the brush because it's the brush mark that really does make a, a difference to the quality of the mark, mark making. I think that's one thing I get from Timon's paints if I look at his work. He's got a really lovely feel for, for paint. A bit, a bit like uh, Giorgio Morandi. I'll look at him in uh, one of these videos. Um, and he's got that kind of feel, a real lovely feel for the paint itself when it's coming through. And you can see I'm developing that. Now around here we've got another dark brown, round just down this side and I'm just going to do a little bit of work on the, a bit more brown in there, on the rabbit itself. And you've got these really subtle greys appearing on it, maybe a little bit cooler. They look a bit pinkish, but the brown, when you put a brown with white, it just look, it goes, it does go a bit pink. And I've got this lovely, um, kind of pinky colors up here. It looks a little bit pinkish up there. A bit more sienna with that, I think. So make it a bit more pink. So just overdone the gray in that. So it just has a little bit of a movement. That's more like it. Just a little bit more, more white with it. I'm using titanium white, which is a bit of a cool white, but perhaps not the white he used, I'm not sure. But I know a lot of painters prefer other whites rather than the titanium. Titanium's been a bit cool, but I think it works quite well with this painting. I've got my white as well, a bit more white and a clean brush. And I'm working onto this ground and letting this ground come through. Just a little bit of grey with that white. So it's a little light brown. And just bringing in these cool colours for the right. A little bit more, a little bit more ochre with that colour just to. bit 
more greys down here, going for more brownish. It's why it's handy having a few greys mixed, you can just see this. So you've got a little bit of a green in that one, but uh, I've mixed the wrong colour there, but that's okay, it's coming. And I can just bring back the browns and the lighter colour as it breaks over towards the... But it's all broken up with little tiny brushes and uh, little patches of colour. It reminds me of Suzanne. And they've got these little tiny bits of... Uh, I've got a smaller brush here to just to get myself the darker lines I've got in here. Oops, not a very good brush that on that. That's what I get. Just a little darker colour coming in so where they get the brown. And the brown's dropping around this side as well just to that's a brush mark really dominates the you can really see the brush mark here. It's not trying to pretend it's a, uh, the rabbit itself, so it's kind of an abstract approach. The negative shape really takes over the painting. So the rabbit exists because of the negative. So if, uh, again, that's why I think the stencil is so important when you're looking at this uh, rabbit where you're working. Anyway, I think I've done enough there uh, just to show you, I think, what I always approach the painting. and. Uh, and two color mixing, well, for getting, for getting uh, subtle tones is very important. I um, hope you enjoyed that. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the next video. I want, to, I want you to have a look at this um, picture. Um, you need to, I'm going to cut on the screen. It's of the studio by Philip Gustav. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, uh, an interpretation of it. But I want you to see what you think of the painting before I talk about it. So if you can have a look at that. A uh, couple of weeks' time, I should, should be, the film should be ready. So look forward to that. So thank you again for tuning in and please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye everybody.